I'm going to be taking you through uh, setting up Eclipse with PHP. And uh, I need you to pay very close attention. The first thing you want to do is you head off to this um, website, this URL. Uh, you can just Google up this GDK download. Now, as at the time of this writing, we have GDK 8 with several updates on the official website for downloading Java SE. Now, there are two different types of Java. There is SE, uh, the software environment, and then there is JDK. Now, the SE JDK is what you should go for, not the SE, because if you just install the software environment, it might not give you exactly what you want. So we're going to be asking, or we're going to go and get um, the JDK, Software Environment Development Kit. This is the official website. Now, when you get there, ensure you download. If your operating system is running 32 bit, then you go for the Windows X86. That's 32 bit. Then the X64 is basically for the Windows 64 bit and the same thing goes for Linux and the Mac OS, Solaris and the likes. You really need to be very much aware of that, of that because if you do not download the appropriate bits, then you might be having issues when you want to configure Eclipse because Eclipse will not run, it will just not run. So uh, you can see here we have uh, the SE development kit, then we have here we have the SC development kit with uh, demos and samples, and then we have here uh, the SE JDK with uh, 8 updates 212. Then, of course, we also have finally down here we have the demos and the samples with JDK. So, make your choice, but ensure that your bit, the bit you're downloading, is well aligned with your operating system. And the best way to know which operating system you are running is just right click on your computer if you're on a Windows environment and then just check the bits. This is the two bit always shows like this. This is 64 bit operating system. So definitely, if I'm going to download anything from this place, it has to be Windows X64. Okay. I would suggest you download this this very one here that has a uh, uh, 215.26 megabytes. At the moment you download it, you install. If you're going to install, that's another very important thing. You ensure you install in a place you can easily locate. Like here, this is installed uh, in this directory. And if I'm adding this to the variables the system variables all i have to do is come to advanced system settings ensure i put my password if my password or if my system is passworded okay so here we are now this is um environment variables you go there then ensure that this part is declared this is it. This is JDK 12B. Okay, so this is exactly where the uh, Java software will uh, call up the parts to execute programs relating to them. Of course, this space as well. If you click on edit, you're going to see it here. That's the appended location of Java. So all these things has to be there. You click OK, OK, and show everything is in place. OK. All right. So with that, you now head over to the Eclipse URL for downloading the Eclipse software. Eclipse is free, it doesn't cost anything, and they have various IDEs that you can use for C++, for Java, for um, committers, um, git committers, uh, PHP developers. This is where we're going. This is exactly what we want. Okay, and you have others here as well, which you can just... Uh, explore for your own um, understanding so we click on the download the moment you click on the download 
ensure you choose the right operating system that matches with the Java. This is, I cannot emphasize the importance of this. Okay, uh, I think Eclipse has stopped um, rolling out 32 bit, so there's no 32 bit in. So if you're on Windows, you click this, you download, or if you're on Linux, you click Linux, you click, click this. Then the Mac Cocoa, that's the Mac, that's Mac OS Apple. It also has its own edition there. So um, from there, we can now begin to extract. This is the extracted file. This is a uh, we downloaded um, Eclipse. So you download and you extract to a very good place. Okay. Okay. So we go into the extracted file. We've extracted the Eclipse and we have the software ready to run. Now, you simply go into the Eclipse extracted uh, folder which of course in my case is on the desktop for easy access. Now you make sure you go and click on the application. This is the application here. You double click. Yes, and you wait for it to load. Now the focus of this um, tutorial is to establish how you can set up your environment, integrated development environment with XAMPP web server. Please, this is uh, part of the hands-on labs in PHP, Maria, uh, DB, or SQL. So, like I said uh, previously, uh, have your note beside you. Ensure you take notes. It's always very helpful because you might be in a situation that um, you might need to reinforce uh, a knowledge, you know, in a real-time situation. So you don't have to wait till then to take down notes. Um, if you're going to be a very successful software engineer, you know, you must learn to take notes. So then let's wait for the Eclipse IDE to load. Then we're going to do some connection between the IDE and the web server. Okay. The version of the Eclipse we are loading now is the PHP version, the one that has inbuilt PHP environment. So we're just going to run a sample script to show us. Now, okay, now look at this. This this shows a, a workspace. Normally when you start um, Eclipse, it will display uh, some kind of workspace where you need to store your project files, you know, by default. Now, you can leave it in the default um, project space, the one created, but I would strongly suggest, especially if you're working with PHP, it's always advisable for you to link the workspace with the XAMPP HT docs. You know, I've already talked about HT docs in the previous um, um, section. So right now, what we're going to do is that we're just going to browse and locate where the XAMPP is installed. Yeah. Then we select, and then we go to the HT docs, and then we select folder. This is it. This is this is where we are going. As you can see, this is XAMPP HT Docs. So you select the folder and preferably just use this as a default and uh, ensure that uh, the compiler, the integrated development environment does not ask you to do that each time you want to run the Eclipse compiler or IDE. So we click on launch and wait for the system to load the environment so we can test our web server and write a simple PHP script to ensure that this environment is fully functional for PHP web application development. Now, I want to believe that you've set up your Java. Your Java is in an environment. Your XAMPP is in place. The XAMPP for, that's XAMPP web server. Yeah, this one. Ensure it is running. You've installed it and it is running. The ports are accurate. The normal ports from the factory production is 80 for Apache. 84.3, You know. This is just a by port, but this is the major port, the first one, 80 for Apache. 
these speeds are just uh, variables that change from time to time. Now look at this my SQL. My SQL is always runs on 3306. I'm not going to be taking uh, the connection of uh, my SQL with uh, Eclipse today, but in the nearest future, I will also be taking you guys through that um, tutorial how you can establish connection between uh, SQL and Eclipse. Okay, so let's minimize this and, and go to the main interface. Okay, this is it. This is, you see, it shows welcome to Eclipse IDE. You know what IDE is already. The IDE is Integrated Development Environment for PHP developers. Okay, so uh, you might want to look through these tutorials, the samples, what's new, and blah 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 but we're not really really going to that we want to focus on our objective we want to create a php project so you simply click this you can come here and start that or you can as well come to the file new and then php project it's still going to land you or to the same destination here we are okay so you can create as well as here um, in the future this might not always show this is just showing because it's the first time the workbench so uh, always try to get you to starting your project from me so let's quickly create a php project now we'll call this first okay just like we did in the uh, previous video for the linux environment okay now take very cautious note of this says create a new project in workspace ensure this is selected now php version you might decide to uh, use some sort of PHP version experimental or maybe some others, but that's not what I would advise. I would suggest you choose the default PHP settings, okay, the inbuilt settings. Now, use project as source folder. Ensure this is selected. Now, optionally, you can put this, it doesn't really matter, but just for future purpose of uh, developing JavaScript and uh, files to work with the PHP script, you can just select that. So you can click, uh, simply click finish and you wait for the project to load on the left hand pane of Eclipse. quickly minimize this and see the file okay here we are this is the first script first project now it's empty you can see the JavaScript resources for first there's nothing there the PHP language library we're using 7.3 the core APIs are listed you don't need to touch all this these are just the libraries that keep the compiler running the script running now this is the include part. This is the real project. At the moment, we don't have anything stored. It's just you know giving us an empty uh, folder. So all we have to do is that we come here, we click on new, and we click on PHP file. Okay. Now the folder is showing on the list here. This is the dialog showing the list of projects you have. The only project you have here is first, and there is no file there. So we're going to just create um, a fresh script, and we'll call this uh, first first dot php. So that's just about it. You click on finish, and the file is created within the space of the project. Okay, you can see that this is the first dot php. Now the, the simplest we're going to run a simple script here quickly. Uh, let's close the tag now over here we'll just say echo like I said echo is for output okay we want to output something to the browser place that now semicolon is always used in PHP to end the statement so here we say this is my first PHP script okay 
let's just space this then in the next line let's just echo the php version php info okay and then we close that so that's just about all we want to do so the next thing we'll do now you want to run this simple script and give uh see what it gives us in the browser right then we we'll come here this is run as this is um actually used if you want to run programs you can run as uh, run on server but because it's the first time i'm pretty sure it's going to give us some forms to fill so that the compiler can recognize the kind of local host we have set up or we are trying to set up okay so let's just run this okay now you see that now it says let it reach run first.php and it says run on server uh, php cli web application uh unit tests so our focus is on running on server so we click on that and we say okay save changes to php uh, first of php save yes okay now how do you want to run the server the id is asking you a question and you need to specifically instruct or program or set up the environment such that in every future occurrence the ide will recognize where to go what server to pick okay to run php scripts now over here is a run on server select which server to use how do you want to select the server now this is frozen now because we don't have an existing server this is a fresh installation and this is a fresh environment okay so we're going to manually define a new server and ensure you know they, they, there's a whole lot of options here you have apache ipm OW2, oracle um and, and a lot of them raising red hat uh debuffs but well, our focus is on the php okay let's forget about the rest for now so we say php built-in server that's what you select and ensure your local host name is local host of course since we've linked our workspace to the ht docs all right so now we are looking at this we just this, this is a variable name but this has to be there you can make this any name you like but just you can leave the default names so you don't have to mess up things okay so now you can also choose this alternatively and then you click on next now this is another very important aspect which you should really really get right php built-in server it says specify the php executable when you install a php um the web server and you're trying to connect to eclipse the x the php compiler uh for eclipse okay if you want to link these two things together you need to define and tell the ide you know, I'm using IDE and compiler interchangeably, so it's just the same thing. Compiler, IDE, Integrated Development Environment, they're both the same thing. They run, they help to compile programs for execution. So over here, we have PHP executable. We have the name as PHP. That is, should you touch that? Now go to the installed PHP. There's none here. There's no installs that the IDE recognizes. So you have to click on Add. Okay now the first thing you want to do is go to the executable parts and the executable part is simply where zamp is installed this is zamp this is c drive this is zamp then you go into you select php okay then you select the executable okay this is the php application now so you have to select this ensure it's selected then you click on open okay you see it has now populated the rest because the, the compiler immediately detects that the name of that executable is php 735 cli and the executable part is of course what we chose and then the php inu it automatically brings it out and fills it as well okay so you click on finish we're done with installing the php web server so you ensure you click apply and close and then you also click on what finish and you wait for the configuration to be done okay 
if everything is okay and voila okay this is it this is my first php script i think i might have to just put f there instead of uh, i r s it is this f first php script okay so if we run that again make sure you click on run on server okay save changes to php the first php you save okay so this is it okay so i want to demonstrate the next uh let me just give you one more example as you want to create a second script let's say new you go to new uh, a second uh, application that demonstrates uh, the stored file here or the, the communication between the PHP compiler and the web server. Uh, let's make another project and call this second. Okay, you create a new, leave the default, the, the same settings you're seeing on the screen, ensure it's just the same. Then you click on finish. Right, if you can, if you observe the left pane, you see that the first is still the only one showing because we've not created a PHP script to run on the uh, second project. So all we have to do is that we come here, we say new, and we come to PHP file, yes. Now, here it gives us a breakdown of all the projects. Okay, now, look at this, this is the first, and then this is the second so all we have to do is we choose the second and we'll give it the name the name of the php file let's say we call this second then you click on finish okay, so second is now showing on the screen on the left hand pane and um, this is the file first has its own screen but second doesn't so i'm just going to make a quick script here that says echo Okay, make sure you always put your semicolon to end it. This is my second PHP script. All right, then let's also echo the PHP info. PHP info. Yeah, okay, that's it. Then, uh, yeah. So we quickly go and say, um, run. Let's let's run the, the program. This uh, second script. See what it does. You click on this and sure you sh click on run on server. Okay. And you save. Now you use the existing server. Look at this now. In in case you, just to save us the stress of doing this all the time, you can just. Check this, always use this server when running this project. Yeah, so that it will not have to bring it up. You know, previously, the, the first time this was frozen because we had not created any server, but now it's showing it because we have an existing server and you don't need to manually create a new server again. So we use this same server, which of course, you see the state here is started, it's running. Then you click on finish. Okay, so this is it. Now, the, 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 this is the script, the first line that shows this is echo, this is my PHP script, and then the second, which is the PHP info that shows the variable the configuration of PHP. You can see that all the way down, you know, you can see that from start to finish, all the configuration of the PHP in it. Now, look at this. This is, this, this number you're seeing here shows a dynamic port being used by Eclipse. You know, it's not the same like what you run, you know, on the browser, normal browser. This is integrated. This is an integrated environment. So localhost or ZAMP is working internally under the Eclipse environment. This Eclipse here. Yeah, that's exactly what is going on. This Eclipse here, PHP IDE for developers. That is it. So this number is dynamic and it changes. The compiler recognizes the PHP in the exam and takes the variables there for itself, for its own internal use. As 
yes assuming we're going to run this script as a fully functional independent web application okay not as uh, a script or a compiled program being handled or being handled by uh, the internal uh, intricacies of um, Eclipse IDE this is how we're going to do and go about it we come to this place this button here okay this one that uh, top that highlights one ask because there are two you need to be very careful when you're clicking on these buttons they have various buttons for various purposes like this one is for debugging this one is for running programs that you've compiled so we come here the big one the big uh, pointer arrow with the uh, green roundish um, sign or symbol object so you run as web application we've seen it run on server and we know that the server the internal server of eclipse is handling the execution but now let us make this application run independently without the interference of eclipse ide so we come here and click web application okay you see that now this takes us uh almost similar to the script in fact it's exactly the same script you run when when running internally okay the only difference is that this doesn't have uh, the number that numeral in between that runs okay let's see let's say you want to run this now you want to run this as uh um let's see run as run as a uh -huh, on server okay look at this now this is this is the this is the numeral that i was talking about here this 8633 the number that comes before the uh the web application directory itself over here now when we're running as a web application we've seen something very very different this can run directly on a browser with XAMPP running because the XAMPP is running on the script it's running on the background so you can actually take the script you can take this particular URL and run on a normal browser but you cannot take this and run a normal browser because this belongs this particular string URL string belongs to the Eclipse integrated development environment I, I believe you understand uh, you've been able to understand the difference between an internally controlled server and an externally controlled server still on the local machine the two operations are going on the local machine so I want you to go over this over and over again and ensure that you have very well um, fundamentally established concerning setting up your environment with Eclipse.